somebody who's never seen this before, what we're doing is track feedback, which means we're gonna take tracks from the Mixed Texture community that are uploaded or put into Discord. We're gonna play them on SoundCloud and talk about how they can be made better or what is really good in these tracks that we wanna pull out as a little recipe. Mute that. Okay. So um, what you can do is look in the video notes for this uh, live stream on the replay and find the Mixed Texture Discord server. You download Discord, open it up, click the link for the Mixed Texture server, and then you can come in and find us. We're doing genre-specific feedback. We're making tracks in our house, techno, DNB, chill out, electronic beats, miscellaneous, like actual musicians music, music trance, side trance, uh, hard techno, gabber. There's a lot of different styles coming through and we play them all. So. Um, Oh, we got Mindbender in there. Yeah, Mr. Melvis, thanks for hanging out, everybody. We are listening right now to an ambient project from a friend of ours, Grown Out of Minimal, and this is a track called Tears of the Poppy that I just play it for a little intro background music. Uh, the really cool thing about track feedback is that people are giving each other comments. So it's not just me commenting on the music. In our group, people are commenting on each other's music, and then we're taking our tracks every week, using the feedback, updating the mix or the arrangement, and then sharing a new version in a, in a few days or the next weekend after, and we hear constant progress. People's music is getting so much better, actually, a lot of times in track feedback, I just say like, okay, this part's excellent, what's the recipe, how do they do that, how'd they create that effect, how can we make a recipe from that? Um, and then there's beginners, and believe it or not, beginner feedback is valuable feedback. When you play a track to a total beginner, they're gonna tell you stuff that a pro is gonna forget because it's so obvious. The pro will be like giving you super technical stuff on the mix and the stereo spread or whatever. And the amateurs will be like, I don't know, it got boring after the first minute. Or they'll be like, oh, you know, that one sound, how did you make it? And like, so it, it's not about being like a master level super ninja to be part of our track feedback community. It's about communicating, being willing to help other people and be open for yourself to receive help and not being a troll, that's all it is. Paraverse, all right, Jeannie, we got you in here. Um, so Pipclet, sorry, I'm not gonna comment on Tears of the Poppy. I just wanted to have it for background music, but we're very excited for this release from Growing Out of Minimal. And I'm gonna start at the top of the list with Drift Away, which is coming from our friend Paraverse. Turn this up a little bit. The title already feels like the music, like Drift Away. What do you do with those vocal effects? That sounds cool. Massive attack vibes, or massive attack vibes. <laughs> Let me check in the speakers here. So I got some low-end notes. What I just did on the board was I just boosted up my low shelf EQ at 80 hertz up a couple dB. That low bass drone. That sub bass drone could be bigger, like, like louder. And the kick drum is all right. And again, the whole drum beat needs to be louder. So the snares and the hi-hats and stuff, they're subdued and kind of far away, but with a nice deep sub, that layer of like, that could be more cracking to grab you through. Like it, it can be a chill out track and still have kind of a louder snare element, you know? And the 
kick drum might be okay where it is. If the sub bass came up and the kick drum kind of stayed there, that might be okay. Or maybe the kick could come up a little bit. Um, those are kind of just drum mix notes. The vocal effect is super cool. We'd love to know what are you doing with your voice, the little uh, auto-tune tweaks or something. And as usual for your style, you have some really nice layers of keyboards. And I think, is there a guitar in there? Did you guys hear a glitch right there? Maybe that's in my feed. It's beautiful. The ending is beautiful. The whole theme of the track of Drift Away, like that's, if somebody asked me how is Paraverse sound, I'd be like Drift Away. <laughs> so bring up the drums a little bit, specifically the snare and hi-hat, and bring up the sub bass. Make a mix like that, and then see if the kick drum needs more or if we can do in mastering a little bit more. Um, yeah, Matt Schultz, those hats, percussion, and little clicks and pops could be louder in the mix. And specifically at 320, I heard this really cool little sound. What was that? Chicken turkey. It's like a little global kind of thing. And we got some filters moving. And that on the keys. It's great sound design, especially because the whole synth mid-range thing feels like one block of genie, like <laughs> where your voice, the keyboards, whatever is happening in those layers, I can't quite pick out how many instruments it is. And in this case, that's a really good thing, the way they, they all exist in the mid-range and it's like that drifting cloud thing, maybe with some sparkles in it. So um, if you have the beats a little bit more cracking and the low end a little bit heavier on this mix, I'm gonna say this is ready to be done. It's super cool, and props to you for getting this done with three kids running around doing all kinds of stuff. Um, DJ Waters is in here. Okay, vocal effects done in Nectar, yeah. Heavy pitch corrections and formats left. Super dupe. Uh, is this part of an album project, or um, curious where this is going? Let's see who is uh, with us live right now that... Mr. Melvis, I wanted to play. So let me get that little window out of there. Midnight Martini, this is coming at you with some guitars and piano. Oh. Just had to reset my low EQ. You guys hear that glitching? I'm not sure what what's different today. Close some of these tabs. section. And Maxime, I don't see your track. Um, can you tag me in Discord with it or something? Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know why it's glitchy today. Aha. Okay, I got it. Hold on. I'm going to roll this back and we're going to refresh because glitches <laughs> can give us a distorted idea of what the track is doing. I want to roll back to that new section. And uh, sorry about that. I just figured out what was the audio routing thing. Um, maybe more reverb. Yeah. Okay, let's bring it in from right around a minute 45. This is like some Steely Dan shit, man. This is cool, like. I would throw a cymbal crash at 202. Like. Two nineteen, you could have a crash right there. When you have that big tom roll, a real drummer, a live drummer would be like, you know. Drums are feeling good. I can feel they're a little louder than last time. That piano is nice and bright now too. Especially that right hand stuff, you pulled that forward really well. Where did the guitars go? That's a nice arrangement that the guitars come in right at that moment, nice and big. And then 329 again, the crash. Yeah, this is sounding like complete now. <laughs> I did the crash for you at 413. <laughs> Okay, technically you can't cut off the tail of that bass, even if it's a test mix or a test recording. Be, be very, very diligent about extending your loop braces like five seconds past the end of the last sound because you never know when your test mix is one day gonna be so good you could get it mastered and put it out. And you don't wanna cut off the tail. In that case, we could do a volume fade on the bass line ending note and it would be okay. But for everybody who's ever printing a mix ever, it costs you zero dollars to add five seconds of silence at the end of what you think is your last sound. And that could save a reverb tail or something at a critical moment someday. So even when you're making a test mix, approach it like, hey, this could be a usable, playable version someday. Um, dude, Todd, this is great, man. Yeah, Ian, I agree, nothing major to put right. Like, it's a night and day difference, absolutely. All the parts are perfect together, glued together, Oh, you had utility width on each piano track. That is cool. Um, this is beautiful. You made a ton of progress on it and added a bunch of updates. And even though each update was kind of subtle, I think you remember every time we were just like a little bit here, a little bit there. And now it's like you go through it and it feels like a different song, especially 
this like stride. That whole section is like a bolt of lightning freshness. So this sounds done to me. Let us know, is this part of a release group? Or is it one track or do you have more like this? Um, I don't remember if we talked about this before, but really nice job with that. And let us know if you need any contacts on uh, possible mastering. So who is, with, oh yeah, oh Maxime, I didn't find your track. Did you, you said you put it in between two other ones. Mark Troy Memories, is it Memories? Let me just make sure I got the newest update. Doink, here we go. I'm about to press play. <laughs> That's that bump. guitars. There's that crash effect. this part. Is that hi-hat going to come back? Yeah, the shaker. Super swing. This is like freaking groovy, man. All right, Maxime, so where is that guitar from? I think we're going to play through this a little bit more. There's a lot to talk about in here. And uh, just 
from the last track, Todd Mavis. Yeah, the release discussion. Let's go into the Discord. Um, one, in the top section, there's some stuff about uh, mastering and releasing and record labels and everything. Let's get that discussion going on. How do you release a track? What do you do? Where do you shop it around to? And remember, inside the Mixed Texture Member site, there is a list of contacts, a contact network, where you can log in there, go into that section, and find a bunch of record labels we have contact with, with email addresses, names, um, label style, and links, where you can go to the label, listen to their style, and if your track fits with what they're doing, then the next step is send that person an email and say, hey, I like the sound of your label. I have a track I think would fit with your audience. Would you like to check it out to see if your audience is going to like it? And then what you're doing is you're kind of giving that label owner a gift that makes it easier for that person to put out something that's good for their crowd. So that's kind of like the attitude I think about is how do you find a label where your music is going to make their whole project better? And um, that's I think that's like the modern way of doing it. The ancient way of doing it is like, sign a release contract and give me a bunch of money and then recoup on the sales later. Like that's, pff, we're just not doing that. So um, I just want to go back to the beginning of this track. The opening, let's hear what are those crackles coming in. Not my crackles, the, the storm. The little synth. And I'm going to skip through sections of this one, so forgive me on that. Perfectly mixed vocal. And I like how it comes in minimal. It sounds like mid-90s hip-hop, like... Or late 90s. When people were making, like, the soundtracks for 9-11 videos. <laughs> it would be, like, this kind of creepy music. So now we're gonna skip through. We got minimal percussion here at minute one. Let's go out to like minute and a half, that shaker comes in and the string section comes in. And then there's a centered buzzy synth. So the texture has like a lot of stuff going on in the different frequency ranges to keep it really interesting. Then that slow guitar, I hear it over on my left. Space hop, yeah. Hey, Gabriel, how you doing? And let's see, how do we get into this gap here? I'm going to go back and check that out. How did we get into a breakdown? There was a swelling, kind of a feel, and like a whoosh. What are the elements that came in at two minutes? So we got beats, guitar, shaker, synth, strings. A new mid-range synth. Oh. That, a new synth note started right there. That's interesting. And then the guitars are bigger, the vocals are bigger. So starting a breakdown with a new synth chord that takes over from the ones that were there before, that's kind of a cool idea. Phil Smith. And this is nice and spacey too. And then a new, like the piano, like the solo or the piano solo or something is happening now. Good composition, good structure. And then we're back into the shaker, so let's skip through, there's that section. How do we create the ending here? It's still kind of feeling like built up, three and a half minutes, epic zone. The guitar gives it a very like backbeat. Then again, we have that kind of swell sound, a guitar chord. the thunderclouds came back in and it fades down. Yeah, that's really well done. I don't have any critical suggestions at all. <laughs> um, Caesar, yeah, reverb snare, maybe a little more 150, 200 hertz, possibly. 
Yeah, Ian Waters, you can have this be a solo piano track and then have the one with the instrumental beats and everything. Seriously, this sounds great. This, this is ready, this is done. I mean, it has a whole feel and everything. So nice job with that. Let's go to some mind-bending acid, dark descent mix. Did I miss any comments? No. Late night cocktail music, yeah. <laughs> and Pill Smith, do you have an update on your um, track? I didn't pull it out because I'm not sure if there's an update on it. And here we have our gap in the beginning. Okay. Good dimension. That new sound felt like it came behind me and went up into stereo space. Oh, 303 vibes. I hope the drums come in soon. More. Okay, I'll be patient. Okay, I feel the kick drum kit cut out. Do we get a hi-hat snare thing happening? Okay, 139, I'm starting to really feel it should be like, just make people jump. Pill, yes, but send it to me on a Facebook message because I closed the Discord to keep the glitch down. Okay, there we go. Two ten. kick request and definitely that new synth is too loud. And I still feel like a hot, closed hi-hat. Like a tick or a chick, like a real like short one, you know. good reverbs and stuff in here. Okay, so in that middle section, are you tweaking the filter on that 303 sound? Was that slowly opening up? That, that's, that's a great sound to tweak. So it could use a bigger, like the kick volume up a little bit. That um, synth stab needs to come down. Bam. And a closed hi-hat, definitely. All right, Mindbender dropping gems. A 
I'm gonna read this comment into the record. <laughs> so it would be cool with some panning on the top of the 303, split it into two tracks with multiband compressor and then pan everything from like kilohertz up with a bit of auto pan. This part is solid. So closed hi-hat, kick drum up, that stab down, stereo pan the 303. Arrangement feels cool. The bass line feels nice and heavy. But the way the drums are patterned, it feels like it stays as a slow beat. It doesn't go into like that. It feels more like on the halftime. You know what I mean? The, the closed hi-hat really like puts the energy up. Add two minutes longer. Yeah, this could be a longer track. Get the eight minute mind bender grooves. I like how that filter's tweaking. And it's coming to a close. And that's that. So. This, right? That sound is cool in the intro. I'm wondering later on in the track, does that sound show up? Because it's a low mid-range sound. So let's let's skip through and see if we can. I think that that sound is in there the whole time. Can we identify it later in the track? Okay, I can hear it. There. I am questioning, do you need to have that sound in the whole time? Because the overall feeling I'm getting is that the track feels like a halftime conk. Um, it feels like a halftime track, like a uh, And for this style, to put this into a mix with <clears throat> the acid grooves and everything, it should be feeling like So the closed hi-hat on top, and then maybe cut out that like conk sound. Possibly. Um, and then some other people put some good tips in the comments, kick drum up, pan the 303 a little bit. I would say tweak that 303 filter a little bit more because it's such a bleepy, wet, squelchy sound. Uh, that's what I would recommend for that. So um, that's a cool track. And bring that one back. There I am on camera with my white background to minimize glitching. I'm doing this because I'm grabbing a link from Pilsmith and I don't want you to see any other secret messages <laughs> just in case somebody said something else somewhere else. Um, but Caesar, yeah, that's a cool track, man. The sounds are great. The reverb space is great, and it has a feel. I just like want it to go faster. And put it up over there. Who else is? Oh, the panned hi hat is too loud. Yeah. Oh, and then that, that other thing was there was that one synth stab that came in that was like a bunch louder than the others. But I think you got the idea. So we're gonna pull out a Pillsmith track from a producer named Scarlo amongst grapevines, let me go back into SoundCloud land, here we go. With the Capital One Saver card, you earn limited 4% cash back on That's a track from the Cars. Foreign. Huh, the 80s band, the Cars, is now being used for Capital One credit card things. So I wish that ad came up when I was just pulling through tracks. Anybody else, if you're watching right now and you have a track that's updated that we can play right now, let me know. Um, we got Scarlo, okay, so we got Caesar. we did. Uh, Kimono Breeze, so Jesse, if you're here, we got Ben Hunt, Persimmon, Denats, <laughs> uh, Tim Laws, Oliver, Weird Town, and I think there was one more, oh, OSP, it's been removed. Okay, so we're gonna go through the Weirdo Town that has that really super cool drum break thing right there. And I got Shepherds, we got Bo, and Etienne with Voodoo Wax. So that's who's coming up. DJ Waters. Yeah, man, um, share us with that sub, sub French core sub layers thing. If y'all don't know what he's talking about, so um, Ian Waters is doing some French core, gabber, hardcore, hard tech sound doo, 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 with these kick drums that are like pew, pew, so distorted and awesome. It sounds like alien weapons in a video game. And he's um, 
sharing some ideas on how to do the production on that. So if you're interested in some new sound design for kick drums, and it doesn't have to be for 200 BPM French core, th those kind of sounds can be used in a lot of different settings and reversed to use as transition sounds and drum breaks and everything. So Ian Waters is sharing that in one of the Discord channels. Anybody else who doesn't know what we're talking about, join the Mix of Texture Discord server. Discord is absolutely where it's at. It's super exciting, and there's a lot going on. And thank you, Ian, for sharing what you're learning. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I like how that came in. That hit hard. this total like minor key world for a long time and it was really good it was really drawing me in and keeping me going then this new sound came in like a harpsichord upper re upper register instrument with a major tonality is that right there okay. and now here it just went to like the sun came out and it went to like a major tonal center like the two chords are fighting against each other. Like we have major versus minor in the same section. That bass is cool. <laughs> Amazing stereo claps. All right, I'm wondering if in this last section you can completely cut out one of the mid-range harmonic parts 
because that bright stuff on top, like if I hear this track, the, the way it seems to me is there's a long dark section, then there's a transformation and it opens up into brightness and it ends in like a happier place. Um, I don't know if that's the story you're telling here, but maybe when that bright sound comes in, if you could cut one of the mid-range chord parts that's doing a chaotic minor key clash, that might open up the top to feel more simple. Yeah, because this part is just like too much. It loses the simplicity. Because in the whole beginning part, it's not simple, but it's like integrated. You know, it's like the simplicity is there's like one tonality. There's a lot of like complicated parts like ticka 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 interlocking and stuff. But harmonically, it's kind of simple. It has that feeling of the bass line and the chords are shifting together through the same space so you stay locked in with it. But when that really high frequency sound comes in, or the harpsichord, let's call it. <laughs> it's really interesting stuff. So m try to simplify the end and just like mute one or two instruments and let the end just be low end and our low frequency and high frequency. Why do I say that? Because the beginning was super empty with that low frequency blammo. If you ended with this and the harpsichord, it would be enough. Like you could totally do that and it would be great. This is so like, goosh. It's so big and the reverb and just that kick, it's like, uh. And then it grows with this sound coming in. And I like how it has a stop and start thing of jig a jig jig It's cool, man. Uh, Pilsmith is Scarlo doing some of the uh, most interesting chord progressions. I don't even know if you can say that word. In this case, it's like interlocking harmonic fields because it's not like the one chord, the four chord, the six chord. It's like not like that kind of thing at all. It's like, like more like voice leading over a bass line. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Tenka's here. Jasper, what's going on? A bit like when Warp Records goes really experimental. A bit. I was thinking like Mr. Oizo. It had kind of like that, that like worm sound of like, instead of a chord progression, it's just like a worm on the keyboard that's like, I'm over here, I'm over here, I'm over here. <laughs> I mean that in a good way. Um, okay, so we did that one. We did, let's play, let's play Kimono Breeze for uh, Octo 49 version five. I'm not sure if this is the newest one. So more, oh, we got OSP, great. Man, um, are we doing Weirdo Town version three, Oliver? Is that the right mix for today or do you wanna do? Here comes my master. Sounds like there's a new melody on here. Now that, that is what I'm talking about with a crash on the kick drum to define a section of the track. Check that out. So dumb and so easy, but it just adds that like, here we are in a section. I really like how this snare has a lot of bottom on it. Getting on that high at. This is getting closer and closer to breakbeat. It's coming away from synthwave 80s and towards like crunchy breakbeat. You've heard me say I love drum breaks, and you've also heard me say I hate stopping tracks to talk about them, but I want to pull out things that are working really well. And in this mix, first of all, the snare drum is, is cracking coming through better than it was ever before. 
And these little moments, there's all these little mini transition moments, like a drum fill with a riser leading into a crash or something. I just want to hear again what happened at 120. It sounded like that riser went into a delay. This reminds me of playing um, the Jungle 45s at 33, kind of. TV dinner music, Japan vibes, TV dinner music, old computer games. That has like a crystal ice ice cubes kind of a feel to it. Like a little bit metallic. Yeah, it is 80s, but that breakbeat pattern is. They were not doing that in the 80s. Oh good. I'm glad we played this track. His tracks are really uplifting all the time. And the production's tight. And everybody says at some point, put a singer on it. Let's count that rhythmic message. I feel like there's a genre or a style. That's more like an R&B kind of a breakdown. So it's on the eighth notes, one and two and three and four and five and six, right? And five and six and seven and eight. I feel like I'm a dance teacher. Like, <laughs> and one. <laughs> yeah, those little switch ups. Nice. And that crash is kind of loud. It feels explosive. It's like on a bump. Now we have a melody section. Uh uh. So um, second time today, we had the later part of the song came in with a piano solo or a melody. Uh, Mark Troy did it, and Todd Mavis did it, and other people. It's a great thing after the halfway point of the song to add in a melodic solo to keep it interesting. But this one was not long enough. I'm really feeling it. So three minutes comes in. Could be a little louder. Could sing it and then we right away we change like I could have used that melodic section longer I, don't know. I know it feels like a racing game collecting coins like like <laughs> what was that game outrun with the red Ferrari convert convertible Add that riser. And we're in the end section. Okay. Let's hear how we end this thing. Rhythmically cool. The mix is crisp and clean and almost plastic. It's like packaged, like here's the beats, here's the bass. And the synth sounds are cool. Uh, you heard me give some comments. Um, I really like how the crash symbols are just so defining on those song sections. And um, around three minutes. That melody voicing could be a singer and it could be a 16 bar chunk or it could be a, an instrumental solo that's a little bit louder. Uh, let it go with that, you know, because that comes in and it's really like people are going to trust that sound because you can sing along with it and you feel it and it's like a nice line. And then it changes at 313 and you're like, oh, that, I wasn't ready for that to stop. So it's good that the song stays interesting and has parts that change. But in that case, that's a, that's a place where that section could just be like twice as long at least. 
and make it feel like you can just kind of sit in it and go for a ride on the melody. Yeah, Outrun, yeah. <laughs> All right, plastic, just like the 80s, everything should be wrapped in plastic. I don't see why anything should not have plastic on it. Weirdo Town, version three. Oliver, let me know if this is the track you want to play for, for right now. We had Vur, version, but let's go with this one. And this is a track, this little part right here where the mouse is right here. I love that part. Let me just turn this down because I'm not sure how loud it's going to drop. grabs you, it's like, we are going to be in the group. The hi-hat layering, every eight bars, something comes in, energy keeps going up. Caesar, that opening sound in this track is a lot like the boxy one that you had that I was talking about. It's like, it's like a low frequency kind of hollow boxy thing. It's very similar sonically to what you were doing. The next drop that we're leading into. <laughs> Where is Oliver? Are you in the comments? Yeah, the kick variations and how they are used as signals. And then the way the sub comes in. I'm totally stretching right now, you guys. <laughs> Like totally knock it, just uh. so one more element right now, mind bender. Yeah, like there's a lot of space in the high frequencies, so I would say like a lead melody top frequency range because rhythmically and low end is full perfectly, but a little like beep, beep, like little thing. Maybe an eighth note arpeggiator for like a lead melody deal. Skip up. Shaker. And rhythmic strip down. Even less rhythmics. The mix is so tight. The mix sounds done. I don't have any mix problems. In fact, I don't have any problems with this track. This whole thing is. And a resonant low 
that's filter sweep down. Chords, dub chord, put a pluck sound, beep, beep, beep. All right, so a couple people are coming in with ideas. Matt Quartz, I mean, Matt, Matt Chords. Matt Schultz, dub chords, of course. And I think we're talking about this section here in the, the middle of the track. We got three parts of the track, intro, body, ending section. And um, like we were saying just a minute ago, there's a, a, a good technique at the end of a track to bring in a melodic solo line. What did we have for the melody here? There. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Was that here? Oh, this. So there's that high sound that goes bow, 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 and it's an organ thing. That could still be a little louder. And then in the end section where there's something like a right hand solo instrumental thing. Could be a little louder. There is a little melody thing happen. Do 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 do. So that could be a little louder, and the effects on it are getting doing something cool where it's like do do, and it's like disappearing and like coming back in. Uh, could be a little bit louder. Uh, things like this. Yeah, really cool track. Highly subjective, and we're at the point. Everybody's going to dump in creative ideas. It doesn't mean that this is it, this is good the way it is, and it works really well. So, I like this track. I like this track, and I can't not lie. Um, let's play Donatsk and then Persimmon. It's one o'clock. Juno, no, here we go. I like that bass texture right away. I would cut that opening hi hat. Let that greasy bass start by itself. Got a little scratchy static on there. And that's again with the sample style. Getting rhythm from short little pieces. Yeah, Caesar, transitions from OSB are freaking lovely. All right, good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so at around 50 seconds, where there's that like, like um, two step kind of feel, t -t 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 -t, uh, that's where I feel like the drums are really together. At the very, very opening of the track, I would have only bass. And then the next sound, only the clap, and then wait, and then come in with a more complete drum layer. I'm just gonna go from the beginning again. I said I'm gonna go from the beginning again. What just changed? Did I become stupid? Did I lose? Did we just totally lose sound? What the hell? That's weird. SoundCloud decided to take a little rest because it was tired. Okay, right here, bass line only. That bass sound is so cool, only bass. And then right around now, bring in the clap only. And... And then you could get to the kick drum and everything. So you only, you only, the intro could be like half as long. So bass line by itself, and then, you know, clap, and then get to this part with the kick drum. And I might even actually hold off on the kick drum. So have the bass, the clap, and this key count, keyboard sound by itself. That's cool. And then here, at 46, where this new hi-hat comes in, drop the kick right there. Because then it would sound like it's a beat together. This is cool. Now I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Whoa. This sounds really... 
really bright and like up front. Did the bass just get louder? use a little bit of a snare drum rush because we already have so much percussion in at this point the, the riser was great but it could be like you know the snare drum and then into the drop yeah matt that's a good point a lot of sounds do drop at the same time who wants to give me some low end feedback? Do you think the low end could be a little? This part is my shit right here. It's so good to give us drums and bass line and just one, one other sound with a delay. That organ sound? How do we call that? I want to give it a name. Okay, that one? I'm going to call that the organ sound. We do not need that throughout the whole entire track, and this middle part got so good because that thing dropped out. It's not a bad sound. It's a great sound, but it's so much better to just get into a section where we have bass line, beats, and one little element in the delay part on top, which was happening. <laughs> Right here, I totally reacted when that organ sound dropped out. We just have the voice and it's got the trippy delay on there. And now we can just settle into the bass line and just be like, down here. Like. All right, thanks for the low end comments. That's kind of hard for me to do while I'm talking <laughs> with headphones. This part is my favorite right here. And then when, they, when that uh, organ sound comes back in, it feels to me like a signal the sound the song is ending. But we're like only halfway through, you know? Because we heard it at the beginning, then it drops out in the middle. So we, when we hear it again, it signals ending. So I would keep that organ sound out for a while longer. Yeah, I agree. The kick and the bass could be a little heavier. Yeah, man. 409, cut the organ out right here. And it's such a cool bass line and beat, you don't need a lot of other stuff actually happening. Yeah, man. Look at what 
I'm doing. I'm just like. <laughs> Okay, what's gonna happen here? I would cut that little hi-hat. Is that a new harmonic part? Scott Burke, I was just thinking about you with that delay vocal. Yeah, man. Adam Hatfield, this track. So how do we get to an ending? Let it be beats and rhythm. Like throw it up into the delay, let the delay take it out. So that thing you just did with the vocal, have that happen a little earlier. Like. At 5.52, at 5.52, do that thing where the vocal goes into the delay and it recedes down and we get just the beat and the bass line. Like this. I don't know why that's so effective, but it just sounds so good. This makes me happy. <laughs> that is a cool track. It does make me happy. So um, I made a couple comments about the beginning. Make the intro shorter, have the kick drum drop with the new hi-hats. Kick, kick drum drop with the wide hi-hats and not have the kick drum in too soon. Um, probably the most important thing is to cut elements out. So in this, let's say this is the middle third, cut the organ part out and don't bring it back right away. Um, don't be afraid to use space even more, which means take that vocal chop, put it into the delay, there is some great long delay feedback section around here. And then just let that delay ride and let, it's okay to have just bass line and beats because you're doing a good job of drum programming and having the drums stay interesting. So right here, no organ, just let this delay like buzz out and keep going with that super long feedback. And then some people are putting in some good low-end comments about the low-end treatment. The Nats! <laughs> I like that track. Uh, Scott Burke, do you have an update? Do you have an update? Let us know. And while we're waiting for that, let's hear what Ben Hunt is doing. Persimmon. That says nine days ago. I'm not sh super sure if this is a new version. Whoa. It's flanger time. I love doing this track feedback, drinking coffee and hanging out. There's a little wood block. That's cool. All right, Todd Mavis. A little synthwave vibe happening this week. That tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it, 80s kind of thing. OK, 
Okay, that drum fill could have been a little louder. Spacey toms. Around minute 10. Doo -doo. Nice to have it simple, just two sounds, but it could be louder. And we're into the breakdown. Uh, I I, Scott, I think this is an update to Persimmon. Okay, he said kick and vocals are now louder. Added a little distortion to the kick. Little EQ tweaks. Same way. Yeah, I thought this was updated. Right, that vocal is better. up, right? Oh my god, Ben Hunt is here! Alright, Ben, that's perfect. Just a simple update, more vocals, more kick, a new version, that's perfect. It doesn't have to be a big difference. And it sounds better. Oliver, good. I'm glad you were listening. Yeah, the space stabs. That vocal being loud, up louder and more in front really brings the whole track to a better... Sounds like she's going like, get it high, get it high. I don't know if that's what the words are, but that's what people are going to think. <laughs> and I like how the hi-hat has a thing of like... Ah, perfect. Cool. The piano, now. The piano. Sounds right there. Where's the piano come in? It's ramping in. Okay, so the piano comes in around three minutes. It's continuing. High pass filter stuff goes up in the air. Now, so what I just did was I rolled off the whole top end, I cut in a notch filter and swept the frequency on the notch filter. The message is that piano sounds like a completely same, 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 same block um, from this three minute thing through to the breakdown. It was good because we heard the piano coming through and there was the arpeggiated um, synths kind of going against the piano. So the piano was really working perfect before. Now in this breakdown, I just cannot hear that piano not change. It has to change. It's such, everything is so good and this track is so cool. But at this breakdown part, I was like, oh, that piano has like a, the, the glint is like the word for electronic or electric keyboards where it's like the like the plink that's like that metallic plink on the high end of the key sounds and it's too sonically repetitive in this section so i would just eq the shit out of that put in a notch filter sweep it around roll off the high end of the keyboard do something to change that keyboard sound in this section so that we have something to kind of ride on in this break <laughs> I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> and 
And now when it comes back here, the piano can go right back to its next place and just sit there, and that's fine. So a little tweak. Y'all got glint. Um, specifically what I would do so you don't mess up the mix position later, keep the piano the same as it was in the beginning. Don't use the EQ settings that you have at the beginning of the song. Don't tweak those. Just add an auto filter plugin after the piano. Use the notch shape and sweep it around. Or actually, in this situation, I would use the SVF, state variable filter. That's the super cool one where you have one knob to morph it from uh, high pass to notch through to low pass. It, go, it goes like this and it like scoops stuff out. So if you use that one while changing the frequency, you can do a super high pass filter sweep, a notch filter sweep, a low pass thing all the way through that section. That is exactly Lee, what, what I would do. I feel like I'm at an 80s dance party in a jungle. I know, freaking Kimono Breeze and Ben Hunt. <laughs> and also there was a little bit of a delay, so if you do the filter sweep combined with a delay on the piano like this right here. And it starts doubling up, just a quarter note delay. Yeah, sweep it, hands in the air. Coming in. Got Phil Collins on the session. <laughs> okay, so piano, big piano hands in the air moment. Like, yeah, the piano is the centerpiece of that moment. Keep it loud, and it's like sweeping the filter is gonna draw more attention to it. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, make it like, here I am, I'm doing some shit. Yes, man. I'm reacting to that sweet lead. Good filter sweeps. You got people in the flow with this track for sure. And then same thing, slowly filter down the piano here. Yeah, the low mid arc, definitely. Oh, that's a really good ending. It kind of spirals up and goes up in the air like So end the very last filter motion of the piano would be a high pass filter sweep to just push it up with that thing. And basically, check out the SVF filter shape on auto filter. Everybody, it's one of the options on the buttons. Uh, that is the most tweakable, performable filter. Uh, people are liking the acid part stab. Yeah, that's a cool track, Ben Hunt. That's 99% done. Just do something with that um, keyboard section right there to just move the, the keyboard filter shape around. I mean, you don't have to filter it. If you like it the way it is, and that's cool, like, just tell me, Steve, it's done. But um, good job. <laughs> I want to try and do just a couple more. Um, Shepherds has a new track called Patterns. And if I understand this correctly, I better turn this down. Pivclay is saying, this was quite good. A bit crowded here and there, but that can be fixed easy. That's a different way of phrasing it. I think I was feeling like that it was a little crowded. Well, anyway. Take that for what it is. Let's go with Shepherds. Probably not going to be chill out. Okay. Not sure if it's going to get louder for this. Scratchy kicks. Where is Ian Waters? This is what I'm talking about with that distorted kick drum sound. It's interesting to do the sound design to get this kind of a shape with the low end and the scratch. There's so many ways to do it. How's that low end rumble? Is there like a whoa, 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 whoa.
slide cymbal sounds a little bit too much reverb and kind of far away. It's like a little bit out here, kind of. Oh. I've never heard a breakdown start like that. Tips coming through in the chat. simpler. Bunker techno where everybody chews but nobody eats. Do you guys say gurn? G-U-R-N like you're gurning? Like Working structurally, it's just keeping me in it, rolling along like. So Pippa is saying the uh, kick needs to be more dominant and the rumble needs to come down. So Shepherds, I think we had this comment on uh, Destroyed Fields in the early mix also that your rumble world is like wow wow wow, and the kick is not like a super pulse of like in the middle of that, so try and um, maybe listen to some more of these kind of techno tracks critically, like set up the exact, like open an Ableton session, session, drag in some mixes of tracks you really like, and just sit there in your space and listen to how they sound and maybe move around your room a little bit, and just ask the question like, how does the kick drum sound in these tracks? And then play your mix and compare the low end and, and basically do critical, critical listening with reference mixes to really feel what that kick drum is doing compared to the low end rumble. All right, so we have a suggestion that this needs to be mixed in a different way. All the things are there, it's just the mix gets too noisy. Uh, I would phrase that as um, some of the sounds are not presented at their best. like that ending. So right away I'm hearing the kick has like a fast little reverb like but 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 and then there's a kuwa kuwa. And I like the scratch on the top end of the kick. So all those elements need to be mixed in a way where the the kick is like a bumpier thump in the middle of all the rumble and then the rumble is like shaped differently. So you think that's a headphone mix, losing the idea about how loud the rumble actually is. That could be, that could be. So Shepherds, um, check out the replay, let us know, and bring back another mix for Saturday, because today is Wednesday, and it's time for the haze. 
<laughs> Reset the board. No EQ. Here comes Canada with the haze. This is going to be the last one for today because it's 1.30. And I got some stuff to do. Don't give me an ad. The telling someone you love them with McDonald's deal. Well, that started off nice and then went really bad. <laughs> the tell someone you love them with broccoli and ads for mix a texture <laughs> while we are on a SoundCloud break. Um, here's how you get your tracks reviewed with us. Join the track feedback crew. This is something we did on Facebook for three years, every week, putting up a post, inviting people to share a link to what you're working on, tell us what you need help with, listen to some other people's music, give them comments, ask for help, and then take the comments you get and say thank you and update your mix and bring it back next week. It worked really, really well. And we had these great relationships developing where, like I was saying before at the beginning, it's not just me talking about the music. It's the other people in the community putting in their input, sharing ideas, being open and saying, yeah, I, I don't know, I need help, and being open to get feedback. And somehow we have this like anti-troll thing where people are just really cool about really helping each other. It's not competitive. It's not like who's the best or whatever. doesn't matter what genre. As long as you're really trying to make your mix better than it was last week, you are totally welcome to join us. And here's how you do it, courses.mixatexture.com. There's a track feedback crew to get your tracks ready for release. And there's all kinds of stuff that comes with this. It's not just access to the genre-specific channels in Discord. Um, there is some instructions on how to become part of this whole thing. You're looking at the Mix of Texture member site. So the member site leads you through all these activities. We've got a contact network for mixing and mastering engineers who you can talk to and develop a personal relationship to get help with your mixes one-on-one -on -one when you're ready to have them done. Uh, there is a section with record labels, which are a bunch of different genres of people who we know from the group. And I asked them, hey, can I put you into a contact network so that when people have tracks finished, they can contact you and say, would you like to publish this? Or maybe even ask, is this ready to put out? Like, would you put this record out? And remember, when you're contacting a record label, don't think I'm going to get paid. What you think is, I'm giving them a gift that their audience is going to love. My track is going to go through the label to the audience, and it's like win, win, win for everybody. That's psychologically what you want to think about to get people to publish your tracks. There is a radio shows section that gives you the opportunity to promote your own music and get tracks that other people are playing. So if you have a show, you can put it in this network and get more audience. Or if you have tracks that you might want somebody to play, you could go in here and say, oh my gosh, here's a person with an internet radio show that plays my kind of music and they have a huge audience. Maybe you could get your track in front of a bigger audience by connecting with people who are doing live performances, online, streaming, whatever. Uh, other help is like, um, Composition, sound design, graphics, that'll grow over time. That's for people who are doing video editing or other services related to the music world to just kind of keep track of everybody. I wanted to just keep track of everybody who's doing cool stuff in one place and make it part of a community. So that's what it's all about. And then, of course, the replay archive, this section of the member site, gives you all the past replays plus the interviews that we do with people in the group with tips and tricks and sound design and worldview and all kinds of stuff. And it's all available in here. You can join us right now and get access to all of the Discord channels for posting your track, getting comments from all these people, and sharing your music. So please, check us out. It really helps, and it's super inspiring, especially because there's no ads on Discord and no distractions. You can just completely close your internet browser. Discord is a separate program, a separate platform. You get it free, install it, open it up, and then you have a whole community in there, voice chat, text chat, hanging out, sharing links. You can even upload short audio into Discord. If you don't want to mess with SoundCloud links, you can just do it directly. So it's, uh, there's nothing but good things happen. <laughs> and let's get back to the music. <clears throat> All right, Scott, bumped up the 808 bass and kick a bunch, took out some scratch, added some dirt to the shakers. I like that sound. I was expecting a 4-4 kick at the very beginning, like bump, bump, bump. I forgot that it was like this. Good vocals, good top end. I think the low end could even be bigger. I'm just gonna turn this up.
All right, I want to say some really super positive thing that the inner baseline voice we were talking about last week that was like, eh, what's it doing? It is so clear right here. It's going bow, 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 bow. It's so much easier to hear that one. It's like bow, 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 bow. I like that. Took the low end out of the mid-range bass line. That's what I was just saying. And this slowdown, yeah. It's not the way. Yeah, man. That vocal is louder than last week. That's perfect. I think the low end could be bigger. Oh, I just spit. The vocal samples and layers on top are so nice when they're louder. It just really brings it like right to you. Yeah, nice sound design. And then bring out the hi-hats right here. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Okay, uh, I have a tuning question about that bass line, that low mid-range bass. Around this end section, I'm not totally sure what notes it's playing and how they connect with the sub. So I want to just go back in there. What got my attention was those dun, 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 dun. That was cool. So that bass line note, it feels like it's going like bum 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 ba ba not sure which of those half-step notes it's playing. But I think I know. Because the chord part that's like, wow, 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 that's going like, So I think the bass line and that chord part are playing the same pitch series, right? I think. Yeah, there's a half step sh sh harmonic shift going down, boom. So I think the inner bass line's doing that. That all lines up, that's good. Cool. I should look at the comments more often, right? C, E, C sharp, and A. C, E, C sharp, and A. So is that going from A minor to A major, or like C major to A major? In any case, I got it, it works, it's cool. It's so much better that you cleaned up the low end out of that bass line, because I can hear the kind of metallic body of the bass notes, which are closer to the pitch, fitting harmonically with the chords and there's less of the muddy clutter going on the sub. Somehow the um, sub thing could still be bigger, because at this beginning part, I felt like it hadn't quite fully dropped. But again, I'm in headphones and talking and stuff. I could be wrong. Uh, oh, that was such an effective breakdown. Yes, man, that breakdown has the slowdown. I felt myself going like this, like, 
Wow. 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 <laughs> it's not the way to do it. <laughs> that slowdown breakdown thing is super cool. I like this track. Um, get, get, get another second opinion on the low end sub pressure level and bass and see if it needs any tweaks. But it's a really cool track, a super cool vibe. And that darkness of like, doo, 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 it's like super dubby. I like it a lot. So that's going to be it for track feedback today. It's Wednesday. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, yeah, I took the low end out. I don't know. I, I feel like the floor was a little, like the carpet wasn't thick enough. I want it like ankle deep, man, ankle deep. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. It, I love being able to do track feedback and hear the updates and comments and see people chatting. So a couple things to look forward to. Um, you need to three things. So first, we got Ian Waters, who's beginning to teach us about kick drum sound design for those fuzzy, distorted kicks. And not everybody's doing his style, but the sound design part of it is going to be cool. So that's one cool thing coming up. Number two, Ty Slackhouse is building a new studio from the walls, from the wiring, from the sound design, or the uh, acoustic treatment, sound panels. So um, he's going to be documenting that. There's a new thread in Discord for his studio build, and he's going to show us what he's doing, what are the challenges he's facing, what's his decision-making process, what does he do to solve those problems, and hopefully the end result. Now, he hasn't told me that in exactly those words, but I'm hoping he's um, going to do that stuff. He already put up some pictures and everything, and you know it feels really good to share the project, project like that and, and hear, hear people like, oh, I can't wait to see it. It's going to look so good. So if you're interested in studio builds and acoustic treatment and how to make a really good sounding room from the ground up, this could be a cool thing to pay attention to. And third update is um, got an interview with Martin Mindbender tomorrow. So I am absolutely going to ask him questions like, how do you get your low end to sound like that? What's your whole knob tweaking acid 303 production world? Where does that come from? Where'd you start? How'd you get where you are now? And what do you think is going to happen on planet Earth in the future or tomorrow? Because who knows? Uh, so I'm going to record that interview tomorrow and put it up as a replay. It's not a live interview, sorry. But that's an exciting thing. And there are so many people I want to interview. Basically, pretty much everybody in the chat, I want to do a 45-minute interview and just find out where do you come from? How did you get this blend of sounds in your mind? Uh, that's the interesting thing for me. And uh, let me know if you are open to being interviewed. And I'm probably going to ask you anyway. So uh, Pipclit says, I love how good people are getting. Makes the feedback a lot easier. And you don't have to pretend to be nice. <laughs> Caesar, I think the bass pattern could be simpler and groovier. Changes too much for me, but everything else in sound design very good. Well, yeah, I don't know. That's how it is. And just to have some ending music, I'm going to play my crunch bass mix. I want to work on this one. Um, my concept is like opening beats in the beginning, super knob tweaking breakdown in the middle, dubbed out beats at the end. That's the track. So thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, Saturday, 12 p.m. The uh, video is already in the replay section as a placeholder, so you can click into it to find the link. I'll send you an email to remind you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Send me an email, steve at mixedtexture.com. And thanks so much for hanging out. As always, now I get to go for a bike ride. See you all on, well, in Discord. Oh, beep, beep. It's